Welcome to HQ Live. I'm Vicki Hoth, Christina, Whitney, Kim Sandberg, Johnny Barfus. We are the educators for Handy Quilder here at the studio, and we have been working on our HQ Live holiday version. We have so many fun things. Mm -hmm. I think it's time for Halloween, for fall. Yeah. Right? It is right. Okay, we're going to get started. We're just going to, we've got things loaded on all of our machines. And so we're just going to kind of go down the row here and show you lots of fun things of holiday versions. And I kind of, as we met about this, I kind of called this our texture one. Because yes. we've added a lot of texture, haven't we? Mm -hmm. Yes, definitely. Yeah. With what, Johnny? Thread. thread. Lots of thread. Who thought yeah. thread could add texture? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So worry, here we go. Let's get started. We'll do you first. Um, I think actually we're going to start with Christina. Christina? Yes. Are we? Okay, let's do it. Okay. Well, Christina, what have you got to show us today? I have a fun pillow here. I used um, a reverse applique technique on it to get the leaves on there. Okay, and like how? What does that mean? Did you? Yeah, and did you, you do that on the quilting machine? I did the entire project on the long arm machine. So, so where did you get your leaf patterns? out of the Pro Stitcher catalog. Some of them were continuous lines that I just cropped down just to take the leaf. Okay. And I set up an area, but before I did that, I layered the leaf fabric on top of my batting and my backing, and then I put the cream color over top, and then I stitched out the leaves, and afterwards I went through and I cut out each one of the leaves around the stitching. Okay, so you left where the stitching is, just a little bit of a shadow mm -hmm. there. Yep. Okay, so you wouldn't have to use Pro Stitcher, correct? Correct. You could just uh, draw some leaves on here, do the very same thing with yep. your uh, your sit-down machine, your domestic machine, yes. or your long arm machine. So it wouldn't have to be a Pro Stitcher, but it sure was easy, wasn't it? It stitched out really quickly. Right, okay, yeah. so, and the thread you've used for this was just like a, what, a sofine? Correct, it was a sofine, just a red thread and I think I did about 12 stitches per inch. Okay. I kept it a little bit smaller because I wanted to be able to snip around it without it. And how hard was it to snip? What type of scissors did you use? I used my zingers oh. that I would show you. The little curved uh -huh. scissors that we yeah. sell at Handy Quilter, okay. So they're a little tight or small. Yeah. Did you ever nip the back fabric or you were really careful? I was really careful and I did not hit the back fabric. Oh, that was good. So a little bit time consuming, but I love it. I think I need a few of these on my couch at home. Yeah. And it's a good project that you can take with you and just work on it whenever you have free time. Oh, so like do quilt it? Waiting in the car for kids, sitting at lunch. So you took it off the frame afterwards and did all the clipping? Correct, yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I had the whole pillow made and I did the, the snipping afterwards. Oh, okay, and then you just made the envelope for it and uh -huh. that's really cute, really yep. cute. Well, we're gonna bring Kim in now and Kim's gonna actually show us the technique for doing the, st the reverse applique, yes. okay? Yep. So I've got a design quilted out here on the frame and I actually did something really fun with this. I actually used a glow-in-the-dark thread to stitch this out. And just like Christina was explaining, I do have my two layers of fabric. So I have this orange underneath, and then I did a black on So you're on backing top. here. Backing, batting, orange, and then black. One layer of batting? Mm -hmm. Just one layer. Okay. So yep. one, two, three, four mm -hmm. layers. Yes. Okay. Rather than the traditional three. Why is it oriented that way? So this is actually set up so we can make a little bag. So let me show you what this bag actually looks like. It's a little so trick-or-treating bag. I know, isn't it so cute? And it's done using the reverse applique that you can see here. Um, this is a design that I found from Wasatch Quilting. Okay. And I actually cropped it to make it, this was part of a border, and I just wanted this really cute. So like really a continuous cute. line mm -hmm. type, okay. I just wanted this cute pumpkin in there. Okay. And I did the two pumpkins opposite so that when you folded in half, both of the pumpkins are oriented Facing correctly. Facing up, yeah, right. On the back. Okay, so. so I see a few other techniques, but let's, yeah. let's first talk about your, um, 
Reverse applique. Reverse applique. How did, and you have the little tiny scissors, yes. so let's get up real tight and close and see. How do you decide what you're going to cut out? So I looked at this pattern really carefully and I decided I definitely wanted to leave the eyes and the nose and inside the mouth black. Okay. And then I also wanted to leave the hat. But as you can see here, on the sample here, here, yeah. I decided that I wanted an extra little pop of color up here at the top, so I cut out the little band and the star. I really like that. And it wasn't that fun. And with the glow-in-the-dark thread, it's going to be so much fun because my daughter can trick-or-treat with us at night and she'll be visible right. because it's the glow-in-the-dark. Wait, in the dark. though. That's only one layer of thread? No, I actually quilted it twice. And this is actually a pretty heavyweight thread. It's Nightlight from Superior. Okay. And it, yeah. It, it really, really kind of built up. It really does Let's glow in the it. dark. Let's see. So let me show you. If I move the machine. So if over we here. turned the lights off, the cameraman yeah. wouldn't be happy with us. Oh my goodness. But I look. have the black light, our black light here. Right. And you can see that it Yeah, it really pops it. It really glows. Isn't that fun? So this is a handy quilter black light that you can use when you're stitching white thread on white fabric or mm -hmm cream thread on cream fabric so it will really show because that's yep. hard. So that's a great nice. option that you can use yeah. for stitching. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Okay, good. All right. So, so now the reverse applique. All so right. what I'm going to do is just cut out all these little pumpkin parts. And just like Christina mentioned, I love using our little scissors that we have so here. Tight. And they actually have a little bit of a curved um, blades on them. Mm -hmm. And so that means that uh, I make sure that I put it in inside and I have that curve down so I'm not cutting into the fabric. Okay. So I just take and slip the scissors right in there and I just trim oh, wow. right along that edge. Okay. And you can see how it just reveals that orange underneath oh. it. Isn't that so fun? Yes. So let me just, I'll clip out a little more here so that you'll be able to see. And, and you don't you know, you have to be careful not to clip your white threads. Right, here. right. But with those scissors, it probably makes it so you don't have much of an issue. Yeah, and I leave. I like to leave a little bit of that fabric on the edge, and I'm going to kind of give it a little Rough bit of a... So yeah. it's a raw edge and makes yep. it look kind of spidery, yeah, which exactly. is really cute with this fabric. Yeah. That spidery look. With the spider web. Oh, I know, my so gosh, fun. that is adorable. Yeah, so okay. much fun. All right, now, uh, so you've got, I can see right here, you have already put your chenille yes, on. Yes, yes, on this end. And I've also attached the handles. So I wanted to do this bag from start to finish on the frame because okay. I wanted it just to be really easy. So I took my handles, and let me show you here how I did this. I just took some regular grow, grow grain ribbon. Say that again. I <laughs> know. <laughs> tongue twisters today and uh, I'm just going to use a little bit of glue stick to hold it in place and I was using my I've got this here my skinny ruler to make sure I have my spacing the mm -hmm. and then you can see I also stitched down just a couple of so lines. that's your reference line to mm -hmm. keep your chenille in between yep. okay and I'm just going to put a little bit of glue right there to hold this down and I'm going to double check to make sure I don't have a twist in it because we right. don't want a twist in our no. strap right okay so all done that. on the machine. All done on the machine. Now I'm just going to take my chenille and I'm going to stitch this down. And I really like using our large square foot for this. Why the large over the half of inch? Well, I like it because it just holds it really nice and flat. And you'll also notice I have the ruler base on here. So it gives me, and I'm going to use my channel locks on Pro Stitcher so I get a nice straight line. Okay. Um, it just gives me a little bit of a base to be able to hold that chenille right against. Right. See that there? Just go ahead. Oh and my stick gosh, it that is like in control. Yep. And I'm just going to come over a little bit, and we'll put down our next piece, and we'll stitch it down. Are you going to do them every other way? Wait, wait. Aren't you supposed to do black? You know what? I actually found. So when I did the other ones, what I do is I did all the orange ones on here and I left a little bit of space. Uh -huh. And then I actually did the black over the top. Uh, okay. So, kind of a little fun. So we'll just go ahead and stitch up here. See, I would have thought, I would have thought that I would put alternate it. 
I would do a black or the orange, mm -hmm. then I would do the black, then I would do the orange. But I see where this puts them closer together yeah. so that it actually gives more. Did you do it the first time? You know what I did originally was I put the three stripes of orange down and it wasn't quite enough. I needed a little bit more texture. Remember we talked right. about texture? Right. So I decided to put the black in there. Okay. So I just figured out that it works better to go ahead and stitch it. Okay. With the black kind of over the Well, top. I like the black. Yeah, it's kind of fun, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, we'll one do, more orange. Yeah, we'll do one more orange. And I'm just going to, you see, I can just kind of lift that foot up and put it right under there. But then it acts kind of like a presser foot to just mm -hmm. hold. Well, it really is a presser foot. It really is a presser foot, you're right. <laughs> Sorry, I was thinking like an iron, right. like oh, a wide, right. the wide base of an iron to just uh -huh. kind of hold that. No, I think that by place. having the uh, ruler base yeah. and that square foot, really helps keep things stable. It does. It really, really does. And also channel lock is really yes. good too. Yes, channel lock is awesome. And if you don't have Pro Stitcher, you could always use a ruler. You can use just the our channel regular lock channel lock that machine. we have. Or yep. if you have electromagnetic channel lock, yes. you can use that as well. Yep. And you know, the, the fun thing with chenille it is, if you don't hit straight down the center with your seam, it's okay. So I'm seeing though that you've got like a cream or a white thread. Oh, that's well, it's actually the, It's your my glow in the dark. Glow in the dark. Yeah, because I want this to be really reflective. Okay, it's, it's going to be, except for it won't show, it's all fuzzy. It is. It is, but it might show. you never know. It <laughs> just might show. Okay, so this is my last one that I'm going to go ahead and do across here. So I've got my different layers here. And with chenille it, this is always the fun part. Get your little brush. Do you want to do the honors for me, Vicki? Oh, yes, this is a little chenille brush. Yes. Or the brush you can buy from the company mm -hmm. of chenille -It. And you and just kind of just scrub it a little. Scrub it. Oops. Oops, that one, oh, oh, I missed that one a little bit. We'll you just have to scrub, we'll up scrub here. it up here. We can go back and catch that. Oh, look at, and I know that's what she calls it, or she calls it blooming. And look at it start mm -hmm. to bloom. Oh my gosh, that it is looks so, so great. Could you throw this in the washer and Absolutely. it would do it too? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, really, so you really can kind of see how we will move on yeah. with the next one because I'm anxious to see how you are going to make a bag out of it. Yes, and I'm so going to finish this. I see the purpose of putting the chenille at the top. Right. Because then you don't have to bind it. Exactly. Because it's just a raw edge and exactly. it's all rough. And, yeah. Okay. When I take this off, I want, to, I want it to be done. All I'm going to do is trim. Okay, so now you have to make a bag out of mm -hmm. it on the frame. Right. So what I'm going to do is come down here and I'm going to undo my clamps. And then I am going to actually cut up the side here and up the side here to about the halfway point. Fold it in half and stitch it. So All right, we'll I'll go get ahead out of your and way. do some little bit of cutting here. We'll, cut, we'll do it to about right there. I should have made you do this, huh? Yeah, I'm kind of. OK. And you have a cute bag yeah, and fabric on the inside. Yeah, and look at how fun that is on the inside. And then I'm going to carefully. Now, before we talk about this, mm -hmm. now we did talk. I just want to make sure that our viewers understand this. We did talk about going uh, like two or three times. Yes doing this design. Yes, so. I quilted it twice. And this this pattern actually has a lot of overstitching in it already, so it's like so I really stitched over it four times. That's great. Yeah. Okay, all right. Okay, so then I'm just going to take and line up my edges there, and I'm gonna go ahead and bring my machine over. And still using your square, mm -hmm. the big one, because yeah. that'll hold things down. Exactly, it holds everything oh. in place for me. Isn't that great? Yes. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and pull my thread up here. And then I'm going to go ahead and just stitch across here. Okay. And would you do like a couple of stitch paths on that yes. to kind of reinforce it? I actually want to show you something kind of fun that I do here. So I call this, it's kind of like surging. Oh, the those, those bands are getting in our way, aren't they? I need to just set them right up here. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to stitch back and I'm going to do a little bit of a zigzag stitch here. And it's just like zigzagging along on your right. domestic machine to close the seam. And then I will just 
trim right next to that. But we won't trim until we get both of them right, done. Right, right. So I've, I've come right here to this point and I'm just going to go ahead and stitch because, okay. you know. Right. I'm going to come down here and then we're going to repeat the same thing. And we're just going to go ahead and stitch across. Okay, so now we'll go back again yep. Yep. doing that zigzag. Do the zigzag. We kind of got close to Yeah, this. we got a little close on this side, but you know what? This is a bag that gets used once a year at Halloween. I'm not really concerned about... I don't know. I think know. it's a cute bag. I'd oh, take it's it, very cute. use it for my purse for Halloween. <laughs> Actually, that would be really fun, wouldn't it? It would. You'd have people stopping you asking. Oh, maybe I'll have to do that this year. I dare you. I know. Oh, hey, I will. I totally okay. will. Okay. Now, do I get to do the yes, honors yes, of yes. cutting? Why don't you go ahead and cut it out? Here, I'll kind of support it for you. Yeah, and we'll just trim along there. And this is so okay, fun so because at this that. point... And then we'll try to, to not get in the way of the camera, but you know what? You have to... I know. Okay, you want to finish cut? Yep. Or do I get to cut that? No, I'll let you. You know what, I'll do I'll that if this. you want to hold it. And I want to trim right next to right that edge, to that right edge. up there. And then we're gonna go ahead and pull that off and ta-da! Okay, I'll let you turn it. Okay, this is the best part. We're gonna grab the bottom, pull it through. And like Christina said, this is now a great project for me to take for my daughter's next practice. I can sit down and cut, cut out, out that the rest of that and then it will look just like this. Oh, it's so, so cute. Such a fun project. Such huh? a fun project. Well, I've been a little busy too. Awesome. Okay. What did you do? So I've got my little tools right here, mm -hmm. and this is all about texture. So look at that yarn. Oh, that's so yummy. Yes, but how do I use it in quilting? Well, so you hold that, okay. and then I've got some more, because green, you know, green's Halloween, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, hold that. Okay. Then I'll bring my tools of couching tools. Yes. yes. And let me show you what I have, and then we'll finish. I've made this cute little mat so cute. or wall hanging. You could make it as a pillow, but I didn't. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to frame it or bind it. And this yarn here won't go through the couching feet. Really? Oh. Yeah, but so it will it? go through the glide foot. Aha. Uh -huh. Awesome. That's yes. so cool that you figured so that out. And it's so like, it's like a bigger hole mm -hmm. for couching. That's so great. And it went through that, stitched. And then I just went back and stitched down, had some fun yeah. stitching, to, you know, quilted it to death, we call yeah. it, around the outside of it. And didn't quilt this. Oh, inside there. Inside, so it kind of pops out, that little, little so more texture. trick or treat. Yeah. It was so fun doing it. And I did it all on the sit down machine. Really? Yes, on oh, our that's suite. That's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, that's so fun that you so able to So you do can that. do that on any machine, mm -hmm. any of our machines, but using the couching. And with the green, I actually did it, I went around twice to give it a little bit of a more bold effect. Oh. And I didn't actually follow the lines totally. That's okay. And I meant to do that because I wanted it to look a little echoed, a little mm -hmm. rustic. A little more texture. A little more texture, that's <laughs> right. Okay, so it was fun. It was fun adding texture. Now. Oh Let's move on. I think you have something else. Yes, I have a Thanksgiving project I okay. want to show you. We're gonna move on to Thanksgiving. We're done with Halloween. So you got some ideas. Well, Kim, we've moved mm -hmm. on to Thanksgiving. Yes. Give a little thanks here. Mm -hmm. And it's still those fall autumn colors. Yes. So tell me what you've got. So I made this wall hanging. I love Thanksgiving. My daughter and I both have birthdays around Thanksgiving. So oh, it's okay. kind of like it. birthday decorations right. for me, right? So I wanted to do something, like you said, with a lot of texture. So this is actually wool that I have appliqued on here. But just a little bit. I did just a little bit of stitching, so it really has that 3D effect. Okay, so my thought of applique means that you're going to applique around the edges, but you actually left, you just stitched yeah. down a little bit and leave in that for yeah. the 3D effect. Exactly. Okay. Then it really looks like real leaves. So show us how you do what. Okay. Well, I started with a the wool. I started by cutting out all these leaves using a okay. die, and you've actually got the die here. It's from AccuQuilt, and I just used this leaf here, and I cut out a bunch of leaves. 
And it cuts well with a wool because oh, yeah. that's what you've got. And I did like four layers at a time. It was a piece okay. of cake. Okay. It was really All right. nice. And then I also cut just some fun little leaves in smaller shapes out of all the little scraps that were left so over. So just random. Yep. yep, just random cut them. Okay. Then I took and I loaded just backing, batting, and my top, and I actually did an all over, just an all over free motion, give some texture again. And then you can see that I actually stitched this circle. So I just used a ruler, and I stitched a circle so that I have a point of reference okay. of where I want to make my uh, wreath. And then what I'm gonna do, let me just show you this technique, it's really fun. So I'm just going to take and do a little bit of stitching right up the center. Okay. And just stamp like the spine of a leaf. Just like that. And look okay. at that right there. That's all right. the stitching I'm doing. You need, didn't even go all the way up to the top. Nope. But nope. Because you give gives more dimension to exactly. that. Exactly. And then I'm just gonna layer these leaves on. So I have a few more here. And I'm just gonna do just a little bit up. Okay. And then we'll just throw another one on here so you guys So you're using the glide foot. I'm seeing yes. that that is really effective for this. Isn't it great? And it doesn't matter that they're even because mm -hmm. you don't want them even. Right. I really want to just stack these. So and you that just I end go up with around a in a circle. Yep. Around and around yep. and around. Yep. So let's bring that back up. I've got to hold it here so we can have this. So you've gone around like two or three times yeah. just adding those leaves. Yeah. So you put your outside, your uh, first die cut leaf yes. on the outside and then from there just added. And filled in. And you can see I didn't even stitch down like all the right. little um, vines of the leaves, mm -hmm. the little centers, because I just, I really love that 3D effect. I right. think it makes it really look like real leaves. Okay, and then, then we have give thanks. Oh, Right, oh, let's <laughs> grab my little wording here. So I wanted to do, just put a little saying here, give thanks. So I just used my one of my straight edge rulers and I just drew some straight lines. With what did you Actually, draw? Actually, this is a, a friction pen. It's a friction marker, which is really fun. Uh -huh. I did test it before to make sure it will iron off. And it ironed off, and then you had yep. to put the lines back and on. And then I had to put the <laughs> lines back on so we could film. But you can see that I just did these right across Okay. Here. And yeah, so I just picked a and font so that I like. And so you took your wool, mm -hmm. and you put heat and bond or some type yeah. of a it has adhesive. steam and seam on, on the okay. back and so I just peel the paper off and then I put them on here and this is actually my super fun little tip so I have my ruler base on here and I'm gonna have use my ruler base like with an iron so you've got the iron right there just and you can just iron right on top of it and then you can see that they're they're on there really well and okay. I just stitched right around the edges of them Okay, because of the all the layers that you've got, yeah. then the, the iron wouldn't hurt oh, the absolutely. ruler base. Okay. Yep. yep. So after I stitch all of that down, because I want to do this all, pretty much all on the frame, I'm actually going to put my binding on in the frame. So wait, 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 wait. You went through and just stitched around mm -hmm. each one of those. If you look so on these here, you can look, see. Let's look. You can so see that I just see. stitched just a little ways from the edge, just right there. Okay to show just to keep and, that in place. And the place. wool doesn't fray. No. So it'll just be perfect. Okay so now wait a minute you said you wanted to do it all on the frame. Yes. So that means binding that as means well. binding as okay. well. So I'm going to switch from my glide foot over to my square foot. Yeah could you hand okay, me that square foot a, there. And that's the half or the yeah, the half, quarter, inch. quarter inch. Quarter inch. Because I want that accurate quarter inch seam. Okay. And you can see that I I stitch actually it's a little bit harder to see I use a little bit of a darker thread but I did basting lines okay. all the way around kind of it point. of where my edge is all right so when I put binding on I'm just gonna start here at the bottom and I'm gonna come right over here and just jump right up on top of that and I'm gonna have that lined up right along that edge and I'm gonna leave a little bit so I can connect it right and I'm just going to do my needle down, needle up. Now, when you do this, you could use channel locks. You so could you're use not a ruler. using this ruler, are you? No, I'm not going to this time. I'll just move everything out of your way. Thank you. And I'm just going to very carefully follow keep that, that line. Yeah. Okay. And I'm going to come and I'm going to stop about right there, and I'm going to stitch over to the side. And I'm going to pull this away so you can see. So I stopped right there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold up, just like you would with normal binding, 
and then fold down. And I was taught you make a little teepee. <laughs> That's what you do. Oh, that's cute idea. Isn't that fun? <laughs> and then I am just going to come and jump right back on that edge, and I am just going to now quilt going. right over it. And I'm going to go ahead and quilt up the side. We got all sorts Oops. of thread oh, going do. on here. Let's clip some threads there. Make things a little neater and nicer. And then we're just going to go right up that side, and I would just go ahead and finish that all the way over, all the way around, all the way around, and then then take it off take it off and what I'm gonna do is just trim very carefully with a ruler and a rotary cutter along here paying extra special attention to this corner right here so that I don't accidentally clip that right there okay I'll just trim right along this teepee, edge huh? yeah so I'm gonna make sure and just trim really close right to this edge make sure that I don't clip along the edge of my little teepee here and come and then just do the same thing up this side then I'm just going to take my iron and press it and roll it to the back. So at this time, it's off the frame. Yeah. yeah, after I take it off the frame. Then I'm just gonna press it and go ahead, and I love to stitch down my binding by hand, so I'll just sit down while I'm at probably at one of my daughter's volleyball games or something and stitch it down. It'll be ready and to go. And it's finished. And, and it's, it's finished. it's a great gift or yeah. wall hanging for yourself. Exactly. All done on the machine. All so done the on the, the, the I, I was gonna say the hardest part is what? Nothing. It's cutting out this. Yes. That's yes. the hardest part. That's the hardest part, but even that's not too hard as long as you've got a good sharp pair of scissors. Yes. Oh my gosh, this was so fun. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I think it's time to move on to Christmas. What do you think? I think so. Yeah. Let's look at and Christmas. And Johnny's been working on he some has. really good things, working hard. So, and he's kind of a, if I can do one, I can do four type thing. Right. So let's move over to Johnny and see what he's got going. Well, Johnny, I said you can do four, but I think you've done six pillows. Yeah, I did six. Are these all going on your couch at home for Christmas? No, they're going to be friends' Christmas presents. That's great. I so, love Christmas. I okay. love Christmas fabric. And I love pillows for gifts. And texture, too. And I love texture. You put a lot of texture. So how I did, did. Talk, talk to me about the process. So I had the idea of doing red work on uh, red thread on white fabric. This is a snowflake fabric, but could you, you could just do any sort of white on white, low volume fabric. I did two, uh, two spools of thread in the long arm. So one is a so fine, the other is a masterpiece. You about used that so fine right up. Yeah, I did. I love that color. It works great. So two in the needle. Two in the needle. Okay, did you have to, what'd you have to do to make it happen? Uh, I just kind of adjust the tension slightly. I didn't need to do much. It okay. worked out great. All right, you just threaded them through Threaded them together. both at the same time. Okay. Uh, then I, this is a pro stitcher design. This is from Nancy Hackey. And she has these really fun modern Christmas trees. I love them. They're great. So I stitched it out twice actually, and it gives a little bit of an echo the second time around. Uh, but I love the way it looks. I think it looks great. Okay. So I did two different ways. So I'll go ahead. No, you, you're going to do that. Yeah, I did two different, I did, I did four pillows. So I did two different ways. The first two I did the red stitching first, and then I did the snowflakes background over the top. And the second two, I did the snowflake background first and the red stitching on top. So what did you like better? I like uh, I like doing the, the quilting first and then the red thread over the top. It gives it more sta stability with doing that way. So did you find by doing that that you didn't have the echoing around? Yeah, not as much. Better? Yeah, not as much echoing. But I, I kind of like it. Me too. I think it looks great either way. And I used a uh, Magnifico, kind of a silver Magnifico for the snowflake to give it a little bit okay. of sparkle. I love Magnifico. Any time, anytime I can use that, that's right. what I choose. Right, gives that nice little shine. Yep. Okay, so what you're saying is you did two threads. Yep and you stitched it twice so that means there's four threads going around this yes and that's what gives it that bold yep look yep okay i love it awesome put pillows then Striking. i assembled them i assembled them on the frame as well so okay so look, turn turn over is this the same design no no no, no. oh sorry is that the same yep yeah, same, design, the same there. design okay and I wanted to assemble them, put the backing on, on the long arm, so everything could be done on the frame. Okay. So I just did the full, the, I don't know what you call it, the pocket method of right. pillows. Right, mm-hmm. Um, so you've got that. Yeah, I just did two. Uh, Pieces. Yeah, two uh, fat quarters. Okay. 
one on, I wanted this one to be on the top, put it down that way, this one laid over the top, and they're big enough to cover the whole space. So this is the infinity, it has a 20, I can fit 20 inches on here. Okay. And I did an area. Of your actual pillow before yeah, you put I, that on. Yep, so I had the area already. And I just went and stitched out the area. Okay, so what he's saying is the Pro Stitcher gives you the ability to plot your four corners of your area, and then you can actually stitch the area. Yes. And that's... Yes, the trace outline feature right. on Pro Stitcher. It's trace area feature. Yeah, sorry, trace area. Yep. And then it just stitched it around. You didn't have to put rulers on. You didn't have to no, think. No, it was super easy. No thinking? Oh, that is so awesome. Not a lot of thinking. Okay, so I know this is a different design. Can I turn it over? Yeah, yeah. You can pull it out. Pull it out and see. And this, these, I did do a surged edge on the finished ones. I just ran it through a serger just to make it more, not on this one, oh, but okay. on the one that's finished. Okay, so I just wanted to look at a different pillow because you have, uh, just kind of fighting us, aren't <laughs> I? There we go. Good enough there for, okay. So, didn't get our corner out there. That's all right, you can push those out with your uh, purple finger or something. Okay, so this is another tree. Another design from Nancy Hackey? From yeah, Wasatch she has Quilty. like all these modern Christmas tree designs that are just one block that you can stitch out. So you can make this pillow any size because you can resize those on the Pro Stitcher yeah. and make it work any side, little pillows, big pillows, yes, or even take all of those and make a quilt out of it. Yeah, and I love the red work. Yeah, that the red work really pops. I love it. Okay, so you've taken this same design and you've done something different with it. Yes, yeah, so let's move down the frame. Okay, we'll stop here and move down, and you, you'll tell us what you've done. Yes. Okay, Johnny. So here's our circles that we have. And underneath there is what you've done next. Yes, yeah, so I saw Christina's cute leaf pillow and I thought this pattern would be perfect as a reverse applique oh as well. Gosh. So I did this in Pro Stitcher. We found this cute like pine green uh, fabric. fabric. Put something darker over the top so you wouldn't see the green through. Did the Pro Stitcher pattern and I did it twice as well with that same kind with the red thread. Okay. I did it twice again, and I just cut out that those circles and did a reverse applique. So did you take this off the frame and cut it, or did you no, do the cutting I on the frame? No, I just cut it on the frame. So just sit down on a little stool? Yeah, I okay. pulled up my stool. And then what? And then I quilted over the top with this, uh, what is it, metallic thread. We found this metallic thread that we thought would look fun on it. And so we did a, the snowflake pattern. And you can't really see it in this fabric, but over the the where the dark fabric is, you can see that those snowflakes really pop. Right, right, that's fun. Yeah, that was and really fun. And then is this another pillow? Yeah, it could be a pillow or a wall hanging. I'll make a pillow because it's just super easy with that method we showed those okay, pockets. Okay, so a comment that you made about the reverse applique of choosing a darker, which this is actually the darker fabric, but this is more of a print fabric so that uh, what's behind it doesn't shadow through. Yeah, I kind of, this was really dark, and I tried a wider fabric over the top. We tried that snowflake fabric, but it kind of showed through too much. And I think another thing is this wasn't a full piece of green. This darker, I didn't have a full piece, so I just oh. had a piece big enough to make a tree out of. And that's all you needed? Yeah. Oh, well, so that's such a It'll good definitely idea. be a pillow. Yeah. Oh, it's really cute. Okay, right. now you've got an... Uh, so there's texture here because it didn't totally stitch everything. So you got some high and low texture yeah. on this. And I did I did double batty on this as well. If you wanted to not do the quilting all the way around on top of these, so it would make these circles kind of pop more. Really, and that maybe not be such a yeah. bad thing either. Yeah, it was, it was cute. Yeah, okay, we're gonna move over because now you have, I heard some orphan blocks. I love to make blocks. I can sit down and make blocks for hours. They don't always make it in the same quilt. So I have these extra blocks that were left over from some quilts I made last Christmas. And I wanted to use the uh, stitch and flip method to make another pillow. So I So laid... what you're saying is those weren't big enough. You wanted a bigger yeah, pillow. Yeah, I just wanted a, a bigger pillow. Okay. And you know, if you had something else that was maybe 
a different focal point. You know, Ooh, I've got some orphan blocks at home. I need yeah. to do that with. Make some orphan, make some, they make some pillows. Right. So these we did the stitch and flip method. So I put the orphan block down. I put down a piece of fat, another piece of fabric. I think I started up here. Kind of did it a round robin. And okay. I'll show you how we did it right here. So this is a, just a two and a half strip here. Lay it down like that. Bring the machine down. Okay, so um, uh, Kim, she was using the the square feet. Yeah. You're using the glide feet. I'm just using the glide foot because that's what's on. And now are you going to set your horizontal channel lock? Yes. Okay, I just wondered how you're going to get that square to the yeah. world. The, the channel locks work great for that. Okay. So turn that on there. Wow. Okay. Oh, take that off. So you can just make it bigger. So I have a question. Yeah. Why didn't you just take your orphan block and do it on your domestic machine? Why are you putting it on your frame to do it? Well, uh, just because it's easy to do at the same time. So you're getting your quilting done. Yeah, quilting done at the same so time. So you can do it all layered. And yes. now are you going to do some type of a quilting design in there? Yeah, I think I'll put like a snow, like a, just one big snowflake on top of there. So that's why it's on the quilting yeah, frame. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. And using your channel logs. Yeah. So it can get it really square. Yep. That is so awesome. So how big do you want this pillow to be? I want to go to about 20 inches. I like those 20 inch pillow forms. Okay, so then you're going to add with, some more. Yeah, and then it's easy with two fat cores again. And notice these aren't even like Christmas fabrics. They're just from stuff from my stash. Green and red and yep. snowflakes and presents. It looks great. Thank, Thank you. you. That is such a cool idea. Thank you. Okay, all those orphan blocks are going to go into pillows. Yep. Okay, now it's time to go to Christina because Christina has some kind of a flip and stitch too, I think. Yeah. Yeah, so we're going to learn some more and a different technique. So hold on, we're going to move over to her machine. Christina, you have got a flip and stitch as well. Yes. So quilt on the machine or piece on the machine. Uh -huh. So let's see what you've got, I think. Okay. So stocking. it's not completely finished. I'm still working on putting the cuff on, but we've got our stocking here. And it's a combination of Johnny's stitch and flip as well as Kim's bag. Okay. So what I did was I took all the fabric. Actually, before I even put the fabric down, I found a stocking that, or I digitized a stocking in Art and Stitch. Okay. And I came in and I stitched it down. You can't see it because it's So the underneath. outline of it. Yeah, just the outline, okay. just to give me a placement. And then I took the fabric alternating using my square foot, did the stitch and flip going across. So that's why the reason that it's kind of missing parts is because yeah. there's a stocking outline here. Correct. Okay. Yeah. And then this side, I did the full thing because I'm going to flip it over, but I couldn't really tell where I was going. So I made it the full So length. you made more. Yep. Okay. Yep. So what we're going to do is if I can get you to go ahead and grab those scissors, I'm just going to tell you where to cut. So we're going to measure here real quick. So there's a measuring tool on the machine and you're going to measure. I'm oops. just trying to get to about the halfway point oh, okay. of where my stocking was. So if I can get you to cut just along the bottom here till about right about here. Just like this? Just like that. Yep. And then do I cut the top as well? Yes. So if I can get you to cut just a little bit more You didn't there. want me to cut your finger. Well, that's true. I'll move my finger. That's okay, perfect. That's good. Yep. And then the same thing on the top. I'll move the machine out of your way. Okay. So I'm just going to... I don't know how far to cut. You're going to have to uh, tell me. Right about there. Perfect. There? Yep. Okay. All right, am I done with the scissors? You're done now? with the scissors, and I'm gonna move the machine just so it's out of the way. So I told you earlier, I stitched out the stocking. Well, I left that design on my pro stitcher. So now I can- The position of it. The position of the stocking, it's the exact same one. So I'm gonna flip this over, so the right sides are together, and then I'll bring my machine back, and I'm gonna stitch that exact same stocking. So it'll stitch them together. Mm -hmm. 
All right. And I'm going to have you, if you don't mind, act as my... Sure. As your clamp? As my clamp. Okay. I'm just going to bring the thread up. Okay, so I'm going to pull up my bobbin thread. And we're going to stitch using the Pro Stitcher. And just let it stitch that outline that's on. Mm-hmm. Oh, I already pulled up my bobbin thread, so we'll just hit resume. Okay, so you want this stitched at the top? I'm using that as a guideline. I'm actually going to cut it off. Oh, okay, because mm -hmm. I'm going, you just closed your stocking. You just no. closed it, <laughs> but you, you, have, you know what you're doing. Yeah. What am I hitting on now? So now that it's all stitched, we can take it off of the frame. Can I just finish cutting? You can cut. And if you wanted to go back, um, like Kim did on one of her other examples, and do kind of the zigzag stitch to make oh, it look okay. like a finished Around edge, that. you could do that. Okay. Reach all the way over there. All right. Okay, let's cut off this top line. And I'm going to let you do the honors of flipping it. Well, I guess we. Probably ought probably to cut, cut it all the way around. around but so that's going to be a lot of bulk in there. I huh? was just so excited. Yes. And probably we'd want to do a little nipping on our uh, on the curve curve so that we get those to go well. And yeah, I like that curve. <laughs> turn back up. Okay. All right, can I, can I do a little nipping yes. right here? So this is where I would be nipping, is in here. These are pretty big scissors, but <laughs> oh, they cut. I love the batting scissors. And then pro any place that has that curve in needs a nip. Just right. make sure you don't nip through the stitching. I know, and you said I get to turn it? You get to turn it. Okay, so I'm afraid it's gonna pull but we'll be really careful. It's cute little stocking. And then when you're done, you can take some white minky or chenille it or whatever to finish off the off edge the or edge. even sew the top and oh add a tag. Gosh. Uh oh, what did I do? What did we do? Oh, he has a furry toe. You meant to do that. <laughs> oh, you are so clever. It was a surprise at the end. It was so clever. I couldn't figure out how to do the heel though. Oh, but it's so clever to have a furry toe, because stockings have that. Yep. You are so <laughs> clever. Okay, this is, and then you just put something around the top mm -hmm. of that. Yep. And put a, a name on it. Tag. Oh my gosh, those are such cute prints. <laughs> that is so <laughs> cute. Okay. Wow. Well, I think you have one more really fun idea. Yes. Okay. Let's move in. Move to our next frame. Okay. All right, Christina, what have we got going on here? I see green, I see glitter. Well, before we get to this, I'm going to show you my inspiration piece for this one. Okay. So Kim's going to hold it up. So this is a tree that I made a long time ago that was an advent calendar. And you can tell it's been well used. The numbers are coming off. Okay, little pocket. Yeah, so I'd stick little things in there for my kids. Oh, that's so cute. So I wanted to do something kind of like that, but on a smaller scale. Okay, before we move to that smaller scale, we have to turn this over. <laughs> you have to see how Christina hangs this. I had to be very creative. We lived out of the country, and so I just had a wire hanger and some safety pins. Okay, and then what did and you then do down here? I had another wire hanger that I would come all the way across and fit in my little pockets on the end. So it would hold it so out. So it would hold it into shape. How creative <laughs> is that? And you got oh. your hook at the top. Yep. yep. It's great. Okay. And the hanger comes out so I can fold it up when I'm done with it. Oh, I don't even think I'd take the hanger out. Well, at least the, the long one. Oh, the long one. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's so, cute. Okay. So I, now with this inspiration, what have you done here? 
And come on up, Kim. You got to watch this too. I think that the we got to see what she's got going here. Okay. So first of all, I started with my backing fabric, and then two layers of batting just to give it some extra poof. Okay, poof, poof. <laughs> and texture. And texture. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And so I used a Christmas tree design from Art and Stitch. Okay. And I made it really big so that it would fit the width of the fabric. Like 30 plus inches? Mm hmm Yep. Okay. But there was a problem that it didn't fit in my throat <laughs> space. It's a little wide. It, it is a little bit wide. So what I did was I started at the top of the tree, but down here lower, and I s stitched out half of the tree, had the machine stop at the halfway mark. So the top half of it? Correct. Okay. Yep. And then I advanced the fabric, and then Stitch I stitched the, the bottom. bottom part. And if your points don't come perfectly together at the end, you cover it with, with a star. star. <laughs> well, every tree needs a star. Yes, yes. So it worked out perfectly. Um, and then I went back. And By I the way, they weren't that far off. <laughs> no. I saw them. <laughs> yeah, you know, I did She's need a, a star, though. <laughs> so what I did was um, took some fabric, and I cut about... Five by five inches five. by just a long strip. Oh, oh okay. Yeah, so I was actually six inches. I folded it in half, and then I cut the three-inch pieces. So okay. Yeah. So I've got one finished edge, and I've got three raw edges. Okay. I wanted the finished edge to be the top of the pocket. That is such a smart idea. It was your idea. <laughs> I don't remember that. Because <laughs> you have so many great ideas. And that's what I love about quilting is that we can feed off of each other and learn from each Man, other. that was such a smart idea. It was. Yeah. <laughs> love it. Okay, so I did 24. You could do 25 if that's the number you want for your advent calendar. But well, I did 24. Don't you do 24? There's, I mean, 25? There's different ones, depending on what day you want to start it and what day you want to end it. Oh, you could do 12 I did, for I the did 12 days of Christmas. Yeah. Yes, yeah. What, whatever okay. works for you and your All family. Right. Okay, so I tried to figure out how they could fit on to this tree. Okay. Oh, one thing that I forgot to mention, though, is that since I did have such a big open space, I actually basted every about four inches okay. before I advanced and then oh, basted it again. So did you do that before you ever put the sewed the tree on? No, I did that as I sewed the tree. Okay. Yeah. That's really yeah. good to stabilize it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I also did a basting line down the center point, which helped oh. me to line up all of my pockets. Okay. Okay. You're really thinking there, aren't you? I, I try sometimes. So another thing that I did to help keep things lined up was I used my horizontal channel locks. And I just stitched all the way along a basting. the bottom of each of the rows of pockets. Yeah. Oh, you, yeah. So I'm going to move oh, the machine okay. over. we got one left here. I'm going to kind of position it there. And I'm going to just quilt the bottom. And you might say, well, why don't you just quilt all three sides? That's what I was thinking. But I'm going to show you something here in a second. Let me put on my vertical channel lock. So if I were to just stitch the sides of the then pockets, it would, tip. it would be so flat that you wouldn't be able to fit anything in it. So you notice I've got little treats already in here right. that we get to eat afterwards. Right, okay. But I, don't, I didn't want it flat. I wanted to be able to have a little bit of 3D pocket, mm -hmm. pocket there that I can put stuff in. So let's get rid of these threads here. So to get that, I'm going to get rid of my keepers. So now you're doing your own. Yep. So I just use the channel locks just to get the rows right. lined up. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the pocket towards me a little bit so it's on an angle. Okay. And then I'm going to pull that up. And I see you're using the glide foot. I bet that really helps stitching over that loose piece of fabric. Yes. I thought about doing the square foot, but it kind of catches when I'm doing that. Right. So now I'm going to go ahead and stitch just along the edge on the angle. I'll just follow it down the bottom, and I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom. I'm going to pull it up, stitch up the side. And it gives it a pocket. More candy to fit in it. Yes. 
And that's the fun thing about this pattern is that it's not a pattern. It's whatever you want to do. So you can make the pockets big, you can make them small. Mm -hmm. You can make the tree big or small. It's just whatever fits. You could do one for needs. every holiday, huh? You could. Do an Easter egg one with little eggs in it yeah. and put candy in it mm -hmm. and Fourth of July. Oh, Kim had a great idea for a Thanksgiving one. I'm actually going to change this foot out now. Um, Kim, would you share your idea with the Thanksgiving and the yeah. gratitude? So we, at my house, we have a gratitude tree. So you can do the same thing, only do like little ties on it. And then every day, everybody has to write something they're thankful for and attach to the tree leading up to Thanksgiving. Oh, okay. So you could do a, a gratitude tree. That is should be really nice. fun. Yeah, really. So I am switching out my foot here. While you're switching your foot, um, do you bind this or how do you finish the edges? Well, I think I'm gonna do quilting by committee with our HQ, HQ Live audience. <laughs> oh, so you we've, got to tell a, us. we've got a couple options here. We can cut out around the tree and do chenille it on the edge. We can cut out the tree and, and the star. Put some of the glitter. Mm -hmm. And use the glitter yarn, the metallic yarn, mm -hmm. and stitch the tree. Okay. Or we can just cut it in a rectangular shape and bind it. Mm -hmm. Or if we want to get really wild and crazy, which I don't want to do, so don't vote for this one, <laughs> is cut out the tree and bind the tree with Ooh. the fabric. Oh, it'd be bias binding. So, yes, but you, you're going to have a lot of points there, which you, we can do, yes. but... <laughs> it's a challenge. Okay, vote. So we Tell want we want to hear what we need to do to finish this tree. Okay, so now so, what's your last? So the next step is to cover the raw edge, and we're going to do that by couching with this metallic yarn. So, and if you didn't have yarn or if you didn't want to couch it, that raw edge is there's not a problem. Or you could even take some rickrack and put on it. Oh, Think yeah. of some cute little rickrack yep. or other braid Even a that you could put on it using the square foot ribbon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could you could do, there's a lot of options that you could use for this. But this is just really fun with this glitter. And this is a, a yarn that we got from Australia. It's called Excel, E-X-C-E-L-L. -L, and it comes in all different colors and it's yeah. really fun to use. And I'm using the smallest couching foot size with okay, this yarn. Okay, because it is quite so, small. Yep. So I'm just going to go along the edge. And I actually did about three different layers. And I tried to make sure to tack down the edge or the top of the pocket. Okay, you really gave it bling. Well, I wanted to make sure I got that raw edge covered pretty well. Yeah. Be able to hold the weight of that candy. Yes, if you do big pockets, make sure you get those pockets secured really well. Oh, that is so cute. So, Christina, <laughs> I know you have one more little fun object, fun Christmas idea. Yes. I have got in my hand. It is such a cute thought. So, this was made using the same technique that Johnny did with the pillows, except I just put down one square of fabric. And you could use ribbon or fabric or whatever. Did a piece across, a piece down. Stitch some cute ribbon design in it. It's ribbon candy because it's ribbons, right? Right, you did. Yes, and then I made some yo-yos and stitched those on. Put the backing on. So it's a pillow. So it is a pillow, but I'm not going to use it as a pillow. I'm going to use this as gift wrapping. So we have a tradition in our family where the kids get pajamas or yep. socks or mm -hmm. something like that on Christmas Eve. So that's what's going to wrap those gifts for my kids, is the pillow covering. So then they wear their pajamas, mm -hmm. and then the, on Christmas Day, if you don't live in your pajamas on Christmas Day, like <laughs> the rest my of the kids world. do, <laughs> like the rest of the world, <laughs> or when you're done with your pajamas, you can put them back in here and put them on your bed uh -huh. as your pillow. Mm -hmm. Yep. How cute. So it's just a different way to use your talents to make something or make and them gift give it, to, it to someone else yeah, yeah. you could so. could you even put some food in there and give it as a gift that way you could put whatever you want in it that's true you could mm -hmm. okay so kim we have something mm -hmm. else to show yes. so our founder of handy quilter has been quilting things for christmas and she shared something with us 
a little texture, a little fun. She's giving these as gifts. We don't want anybody to know, but she is giving these as gifts. And so Laurel Barris, the founder of Handy Quilter, has made this beautiful tree. And it has all this beautiful quilting in the straight lines, stippling through here, Christmas trees around the edge, little buttons so that you can put little favors on it or little ornaments. But then she made little holes and it's, it's a tree, it's a Christmas tree. So if you don't wanna hang a Christmas tree at Christmas, look, there it is, you've got your tree and we'll share where she got the pattern for that so that if you wanted to make something like that too. So you can put that down, Kim, if you want and show them all your face. <laughs> now we have one more thing to show you. We have a message for you. Hold on. Christina, I know you have got some flip, flip and stitch going on and lots of texture. This quilt you spent some time on. So tell us what, what you did here. This is really Well, this was a fun. panel that we got from Moda and we kind of did quilting by committee. We so, always do. <laughs> yes. So we did that here in the studio. We used um, one layer of wool batting and then we wanted to have just the straight line stitching coming across. And so rather than trying to make it exactly the same distance between each line, I wanted to have it be perfectly imperfect. Okay, a little random, huh? Yes, so I did use a, the half inch square foot. Okay. And that was just kind of a gauge for me. Right. So it would be a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller, just depending on what I felt okay. like doing on that row. So we did that across using um, a monopoly thread. Oh, okay, because there's so many colors in this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what would you have used? That's great yeah. to know. So the monopoly thread was great. We also used glitter thread. So in all of the little snowflakes, we have some glitter. Okay. And then we did chenille it. You had a lot of fun with chenille it. Oh my I gosh. I did. So all the lettering around the flowers, all the vines. Um, but that's not it. That's not all. There's we did, more? There's more. We did couching as well. Okay. And we used... Let's bring that up here. Okay. So this right here is just some black metallic, metallic yarn. yarn. Yes. So we added that and it is also stitched with a glitter thread. So it's really going to have bling there. Yes. All right. So that was a lot of fun to work on. And it was great having everybody working on it a little bit together and... Well, I... Yeah don't think I stitched a stitch in it, but I offered. You, you had great ideas. Oh, that's good. I had something <laughs> to offer. Wow. Yes. Well, this is kind of our finale right here of, of everything that we've been able to do for this Christmas. We're going to bring our whole team in here because we have something to say, something really special to say for all of you. So we're going to take this quilt off and we'll let Johnny, you, Christina, you can come on up here. And we just want to wish, we just want to wish you, whoop, there you go. Have, have yourself, yourself a merry, merry little, little Christmas. Christmas and a happy holidays. Enjoy every one of the holidays. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. You'll get all sorts of information. You'll enjoy, uh, you'll get notices when we have our HQ Lives. And we look forward to seeing you next month. Happy holidays. <laughs>